guys, I hope you're doing well. I am just making a few potions and since I've had so many requests to show things as I do them and I rarely think to snap a picture or something until after the fact, I thought about it today and thought, you know what, this is a perfect day to show a few things. So I'm going to show you a few of the potions that I like making and explain a little bit of why I do what I do when I'm making them. and. See how it goes. All right, I'm gonna move the camera down here so you can see my whole counter here. All right, so first things first, today what I'm making is oil, um, a couple different herbal oils that are infused. And when we're making an herbal oil that is infused with the live plant, uh, I like to wilt mine first. So this is some plantain that I harvested yesterday and I left it out um, on a drying rack overnight so you can see it's pretty wilty but not um, dried you know some of it is a little bit like this you can hear a little bit of a crunch to it but it's not um, super crispy if it had dried crisply you know to a crisp that would be fine too you can totally use um, completely dried plants but um, there is some ben extra benefit that comes with fresh but when we're using oil to extract the goodness from the plant um, oil is a little bit more likely to go rancid if there's too much moisture in the plant. And so I always like to at least um, wilt my live plants before I add them to oil. If you're making a tincture or something else, you can totally use the fresh plant, but it really rarely hurts to wilt them. Um, there are a few plants that there are constituents that you can get out of the fresh plant that you cannot get out of the dried plant. And so um, for those types of plants, you want to watch and make sure you don't let them dry too much so that you're going ahead and getting the really good freshness. But for most plants, um, with oil, fresh or dried is kind of um, not a huge, huge difference. Now, so uh, let's see. Let's rewind here for a second. So when you're going to make an herbal oil um, or an oil that is infused with anything, um, any type of plant, you can use a wide variety of different oils. These are all oils that are specific to um, skin, you know, topical use. These are, are oils that you would find either at like your health food store in the um, aisle with skincare and lotion and stuff like that. Um, they're great to use for this type of a product, obviously, if it's a topical application that you're going to use the oil for. Everything I'm making today is for a topical application. It's not, we're not going to be eating it, but you can also take a lot of fresh herbs and infuse them into cooking oil and use them to flavor cooking oil and do great things with those. So these are a perfectly fine option for topical use. This is apricot kernel, grape seed. I just grabbed a few to give some examples. This is sweet almond and jojoba. Do pay attention if they're organic or not. Um, there, some of these it doesn't matter a whole lot because the plant isn't typically sprayed a ton, but on some of them, organic versus inorganic can really matter as far as the chemicals that can be present in what you're hoping is a natural product. As far as cooking oils, there's a whole host. The one I use absolutely the most is just good old olive oil, nothing special. I don't even use organic a lot of times with um, topical applications. Avocado is another one that I like a lot. Grapeseed oil is one that I use a lot as well. And these can be used for internal applications or for topical applications as well. Just because they're, you know, cooking oil doesn't mean you can't put them on your skin. Typically cooking oil is a little bit higher grade. Now that's totally a... <laughs> That can be the case or it cannot be a case. Just because it's cooking oil doesn't mean it's necessarily a higher grade than uh, one of these oils that is made for topical use or is um, sold for topical use. A lot of times they're exactly the same thing. But if you can eat it, you can for sure put it on your skin. Just because you can put it on your skin doesn't mean you can for sure eat it. <laughs> so keep that in mind um, if you are wanting to make something for internal use um, later on. As far as why to choose which oil, I like olive oil the best because it's one of the most rich and emollient, it's one of the most moisturizing, and a lot of times when I'm making an herbally infused, or an herb infused oil, I will, um, I'm wanting it to be really soothing, either it's for an earache, or it's for topical application for a wound, or for a salve to go in it for sore muscles or something like that. And I like the richer oils a lot of times for those type applications 
um, in this situation. So olive oil is one that I really, really like. Coconut oil is super popular and you may notice it's not even in my repertoire. Coconut oil is not one that I use much at all, especially for topical applications. I do use it in cooking quite a lot myself, but I don't infuse it with um, plants very much at all. Coconut oil is a bit more astringent than a lot of the oils. It's, um, it's a bit more drying um, for an oil and I may get some argument and push back on that. And feel free to experiment, you know, with all of these oils. This is definitely just my opinion and experience um, from a lot of years of trying out different oils and just seeing how they react with different skin types, etc. But I found coconut to be not super hydrating. And so if you're going for something rich and moisturizing for really dry skin or like a lip balm, etc., coconut oil is not one of my favorites. That being said, it's a fantastic oil as far as shelf life. It has some great properties for your skin. And if it works well for you, and if you're not needing a super um, emollient, really rich oil, then coconut oil would be a great um, option for a lot of this. If you are doing it for an infused oil like I'm gonna do today, you will need to get fractionated coconut oil because um, regular coconut oil is solid at room temperature unless it's over a certain temperature, I wanna say. 90 but I'm not I'm not even sure I've I've blurred on all the melting points of all of those things I used to know all of that <laughs> but um, it is solid at room temperature unless it's really hot and so that makes it difficult for it to really um, properly cover and soak the herbs and extract what you need to that being said you can use heat with coconut oil to extract like I will mention in a little bit and it can work just fine it just takes a little bit more um, thought and preparation potentially. I don't like using fractionated coconut oil myself just because it's um, a pro another process they do to it. It's one more step of refining the oil and um, altering it from its natural state and I like to stay as close to the natural state as possible. So since there's so many other oils to choose from that I like, I kind of don't use coconut oil very much. Um, other than olive oil, my other favorite oil is jojoba. It can be a fairly expensive oil, so it kind of depends on what you're what you're doing um, and what you're wanting from the product. But it is really um, good as far as its shelf life compared to a lot of other oils, and it's really um, rich without being super super oily. It's lighter feeling on the skin than olive oil, but it is um, almost as nourishing, I would say, uh, long term. So I really really like jojoba oil and use it a lot. And these other oils, it really depends on what I'm making. Grapeseed and apricot both are a bit lighter oils, so if you have acne prone skin or really oily skin um, and aren't really looking for a bunch of moisture, then these oils are great. Um, sweet almond oil is another amazing standby that I've used for a lot of years. With all of the nut allergies um, seeming to just kind of ramp up more and more, I am venturing more and more away from using sweet almond oil just in case, you know, I pass on a salve or a lip balm or something to someone who happens to have a nut allergy. You know, uh, people don't have the same kind of reactions to olive oil and these other oils, so I end up just using them, especially if it's gonna be something that I'm sharing. However, if I'm just making something for myself or my family, I still use um, almond oil a fair amount and really, really like it. Um, I would say it's an in-between oil as far as it's not super, super rich and thick, but it's also not um, thin or um, astringent at all either. It's quite moisturizing. As far as other ways to um, extract the goodies from herbs, there are lots of different minstrums that you can use, which is just the liquid that you use to draw um, the goodness of the plant into a form that you can use basically that's not just you know a whole plant you can use oil obviously as i've mentioned already you can use stuff like witch hazel um i have a jar right here this is calendula flowers soaking in witch hazel that is going to make an amazing um, facial toner spray with all the goodness from the calendula which is super soothing and nourishing for skin and helpful for irritation and and um, problems like that. So something like witch hazel is a great um, extractor and will draw the goodness of the herb into it. And then you can use it in all kinds of lotions, um, sprays and things like that. You can also use apple cider vinegar. And for certain applications, it's ideal. Um, this is one here. This is a mixture of plantain and lavender buds that are soaking in just pure apple cider vinegar. 
And this is just a different method of tincturing. It's just a tincture technique, but with apple cider vinegar instead of an alcohol. And then this is used as a uh, bug bite um, ointment, or you can put it in a little roller ball and roll it on, or a spray bottle and spray it on, or just dab it on, um, or any kind of kind of contact dermatitis type um, situation or bite and sting. It's amazing. The apple cider vinegar helps soothe the sting or the bite or the irritation itself, but it also is really great at drawing out all of the good properties that are helping us with this particular application. Now, when you're trying to decide which um, medium to use to extract what you're doing, there's several things that you want to consider. First off is obviously what you're doing with it. So if you're trying to make a salve or an ointment or some kind of a cream using a water-based um, extractor like um, apple cider vinegar or witch hazel wouldn't be a good idea because it's going to be really hard to get this mixed into some kind of a salve or ointment that's easy to do. So if you're going to make a salve or an oil-based um, product of some kind, you would definitely want to use oil to extract your um, your um, goodies from your herbs. The other thing is if you're taking it internally, taste needs to be um, considered. I do not like making tinctures with apple cider vinegar if I'm going to be taking them internally. I find the taste just it just too repelling. Now that being said, I love apple cider vinegar for other uses. I love vinegar and eat it all the time and all kinds of stuff. But for medicinals, um, I really, really object and my nausea kicks in if I'm taking um, flower essences or um, tinctures that are made out of apple cider vinegar. So if I'm taking it internally, I wanna go with something like glycerin or alcohol. And this is really, really strong um, certified organic, um, non-GMO, yada, yada, grain alcohol that I use um, for making my tinctures. And while it doesn't taste great, obviously it's an alcohol, you can use brandy or other type alcohols, it doesn't taste great, it doesn't have the strong, um, really pungent flavor that apple cider vinegar does, and I find it's easier to get down as a medicine when you're sick, and it's much easier to hide it um, in a spoonful of honey or something if you need to hide it in a pinch. <laughs> Also, you can take a, a teaspoon of an alcohol type tincture and just put it into a hot cup of tea and most of the alcohol will evaporate off and you can just drink that and avoid a lot of the taste. Whereas with like an apple cider vinegar, it just doesn't evaporate off the same and you'll have that vinegary taste besides whatever taste um, the herbs happen to have added to your extract. So when you're making something internal, um, you need to think about what you're making with it, but also whether taste or something plays into it, um, whether or not it's okay to have alcohol in it. For example, if you're making a sleep tincture for a child, you wouldn't want to use alcohol as an extract. Um, not that in a pinch, you know, a small amount of an alcoholic tincture would hurt them, um, but something like glycerin um, is sweet. It's um, kind of soothing down the throat and stuff if, it, if it's for something like a sore throat or a nauseated stomach, which a lot of times children's ailments um, have those two symptoms quite a lot. This is just a much more um, soothing, easy thing to get kids to take than something like a very strong alcohol or vinegar, either one, tincture. All righty. So the other thing that you wanna consider when choosing what um, to use to extract your goodies with is that all all menstruums are not created alike so um for example taking oil and um infusing it with saint john's wort and calendula for example or taking calendula and saint john's wort and um, extracting it via an alcohol what it actually pulls out of the plant in those two different uh, with those two different liquids are very very different and the chemical constituents can be very very different so if we used for example a cooking oil and made a infused oil that was totally edible out of let's just say st. John's wort for example and then we made a tincture out of st. John's wort with alcohol and then took a teaspoon of each and compared them, you would find that the alcohol extract has far, far more um, goodies in it. And, um, sorry, my low battery light is coming on and flashing and I just had to 
patch this in already. Hopefully I can finish this before my battery dies. Anywho, um, so you want to consider what, um, what chemical constituents you are trying to extract and which um, solvents will best do that um, for for which plants because it varies quite a lot and for some plants using you know an apple cider vinegar or an alcohol would be about the same it would extract about the same amount of stuff if the chemical constituents um, are certain types and in other types of plants it will extract vastly different things depending on what type of a liquid that you use so keep that in mind um, if you are yeah if you're going for um, an extract that you're wanting a certain compound for example if it's for pain or if it's for um, you know things like that it knowing whether your the constituent you are trying to extract from the plant is water soluble oil soluble um, alcohol soluble etc is can be invaluable but also if you're just making your own you know extracts you don't have to stress a ton about which you know solvent is absolutely the best generally for tinctures we go with alcohol unless there's some other reason to do you know glycerin or something for a child etc um, for topical use we go um, oil apple cider vinegar or witch hazel generally speaking although sometimes alcohol can be you know beneficial but it really depends on the herb for specific plants some of them you really really want to use alcohol you just cannot extract the the constituents that you're wanting with other mediums especially tea unless um, a compound is completely water soluble then making a tea isn't going to extract what you need so when you're wanting to decide to decide what to use to extract your herbs with you don't really have to have a ton of knowledge on exactly the chemical constituent you're trying to extract just being aware that a lot of the compounds that we're wanting aren't water soluble is going to be really helpful so um, for alcohol, for example, how we get around um, getting everything we want is we use some water. There's some water in, in our mixtures when we're making a tincture. We, we're filling up um, some portion of our bottle with distilled water or purified water and that um, allows the water soluble compounds to be extracted and then we're filling the rest up with an alcohol that extracts a lot of the other compounds that we're wanting to extract so we're mixing. Um, if you do pure alcohol you're going to miss some of the, especially if it's a really, um, uh, I just went blank on the term for alcohol, you know, content being really high, especially if it's a really, I want to say concentrated alcohol and that's totally not right. But like this is 190 proof, which is really strong and has very little actual water in it and is predominantly the alcohol. And so when you're using a really strong, um, Sorry, my battery light is coming on again, but it didn't shut off. Okay, so when you're using a really strong alcohol, it's important to add some water to your mixture. If you're using an alcohol that already has a fairly good percentage of its um, content, of its moisture content in water already, then you don't have to worry about it. But, um, so vegetable glycerin is the same way. Vegetable glycerin extracts a lot of the compounds that aren't water soluble, but we also add some water to it so that it extracts the water soluble compounds too. Uh, it really depends, the proportions depend on the plant that you're using. Some plants, the constituents that you want require a quite high, for example, like alcohol content. So the amount of water we add is much, much less to those tinctures because they, um, the compounds we're predominantly wanting are only going to be extracted by the high um, concentrated alcohol rather than the water itself. Other herbs, a lot of the constituents that we predominantly want are water-based. So the water um, to alcohol ratio is a bit balanced, heavier to the water side. Of course, we want to use enough alcohol to keep it well preserved, but for something like this that's 190 proof, that's not too hard to do. You can add um, a fair amount of water and still get away with it just fine. So that's a couple um, things to consider when you're deciding what type of a menstruum to use. And I'll get back to the rest of the video where I pasted this in. So once you've decided what you're gonna make, um, then, and what you're gonna use to make it, Today, I'm just gonna go with, there, there's no way I can cover all of these different topics of all of these things that I uh, that you could make and tinctures and all that. So today we're just gonna go with herbal oils, but I just wanted to give kind of a little overview. Hopefully that was helpful on um, other, other mediums that you can use to extract um, your 
herbs. So I'm taking these wilted um, plantain leaves here and just wadding them up into kind of a tight little bundle so that I can cut them. And you can also just throw them into like a food processor or something like that and chop them up, but I don't have a ton to do. I'm making a small jar today, so this is just fine. Um, the finer you can get your down a little the finer you can get your leaves the better it the more contact um, and the more edges of the leaf that are in contact with the um, liquid that you are using to extract it with the better um, that's how the open places are the easiest to um, extract so wounds are your friend here um, leaves are designed to retain all of their nutrients and retain their moisture and retain their goodies so that the sun and wind and everything doesn't just dry them out and kill them all the time. So um, leaving the leaf whole, all of this outer um, bit protects all of the inner goodies. And so it takes longer, it takes more heat and a lot longer to extract the goodies from a whole leaf. It's totally doable, but it takes longer and um, usually extracts less. So chopping up whatever you have is a great idea. Chopping it up before you wilt it or before you dry it, if you are going to dry it, is not the best idea because the um, volatile oils and um, other goodies evaporate off um, or oxidize a lot of times when um, they're exposed to air. So if I was going to dry these leaves all the way, I would have dried them whole and then crushed them up right as I put them into a jar or um, other whatever else I was making at the time. I would, I would crush them up right before I was using them, um, not while they're being dried, just to preserve all of the goodies. Now there are several ways after you put this into the jar and add your oil that you can go about um, cooking it, so to speak, or um, brewing it. You can put it in the sun, which is a great, great way, especially if it's summer and you have nice hot weather. You can just leave it in the sun for a couple of weeks. Um, the other really easy thing is using a crock pot. And you just fill your crock pot with a bit of water, you know, up, up. If you're using a jar like this, you know, up as far as you can without being too full and overflowing yourself and put a towel in the bottom of it and set your jars into the crock pot on low with the lid off and that will just provide heat from the bottom and help the process along. It also, the heat also helps either of the sun or the crock pot. They both help evaporate off any extra moisture that is still left in the leaves, which you really want to do. All right, so they're all chopped up and in our jar here. So now we're gonna add the oil. For this, for these leaves, I'm using olive oil this time. And we're just gonna cover them really good. You can look online, there are a lot of um, recommendations for proportions as far as how much um, dried herb to how much oil. I've done this type stuff for so long that I don't measure anything anymore. I, I go by feel, I know um, well enough how everything is. But using, you know, if you're using dried herbs, you can use up to half um, herb and then, so that's one part herb to two parts of oil. If they're fresh um, and if, especially if they retain a fair amount of moisture, you need to alter your proportions a little bit based on what type of plant you're using, etc. And how you're gonna brew it as well. So once you get the oil all in like this, we are going to, let's see if I can find, here we go. Rather than putting a lid on it, now if you're using completely dried herbs that were totally dried and there's no moisture left into them, you could totally screw a regular lid on um, just like so and be good to go. However, because these were just wilted and still have some moisture left, we want to leave the top open so that as much um, moisture as possible can evaporate off while this is brewing. So to do that, we will just put a little bit of cheesecloth over this because we don't want any bugs or any you know dirt and grime to get in here while this is brewing. And a rubber band is the easiest um, thing to use to attach it. You can totally use a piece of jute twine or whatever works for you, but a rubber band is easy. 
just like that. And this can either be set, like I said, out in the sun to brew um, or into your crock pot, which I will go into in a few more details in a minute. Okay, I have another jar here that's kind of all ready to go. It just needs oil. The bottom half is filled with wilted St. John's wort and the top half is filled with dried, fully dried calendula flowers. And this is gonna be um, a soothing blend, go into a soothing herbal blend that I make but these two are going to brew together and that's totally fine. You can mix and match your um, herbs all you want. They don't all have to be dried or all have to be wilted. You can totally mix the two. You can't um, use com half completely fresh, for example, and then half dried and think the two will balance each other out. They all need to have a little bit of their moisture reduced from um, fresh picking for most of most of vegetation. There are a few things like even um, the plantain I was using is broadleaf plantain, but the narrow leaf plantain, especially this time of year, the leaves contain so little moisture already that really we could just pick it fresh and throw it in a jar with oil without even having to worry about it at all. But other than those few plants that are really low on moisture in general, reducing the moisture content a little bit before infusing your oil is absolutely ideal. So for this guy, I am going to be using grapeseed oil. And we'll get him going. 